This is Tom Nappy from HCAM News alongside Michelle Murdoch and Jim Kleinkoff from the Hopkinton Independent. And we are joined by Board of Selectmen candidate John Catino. John, how are you doing today? Very good. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to, to a debate, but uh, I'll take an interview. Yeah, unfortunately, we couldn't get the debate arranged, but it's good to uh, have an opportunity to talk to you as well as your opponent. Thank you very much. All right, so our first question is, the Board of Selectmen is the highest office in town. What motivated you to run for the Board of Selectmen, and why do you think you are qualified to fill this position? Well, with um, 10 years on Zach and Vice Chairman of the uh, Planning Board, I was part of drafting over 100 different articles and enhancements for, for zoning. And then at the same time, I was um, on the uh, Upper Charles Trails Committee, where we were buying pieces of land, trying to uh, connect the center trail to both uh, Milford and, and Ashland. Um, and at the same time, I was on a committee where we were drafting the uh, visioning statement. And so being on the being on the Board of Selectmen was a way to, to start to write policy and um, to try and bring all of these aspects together. And, uh, uh, you know, with, with the growth, trying to control, control spending and all of that. And, and I think it's because of, because of my, my background in, in most of the different committees in, in, in town and some of the other things that I've done that uh, it fully qualifies me as well as being vice chairman so far for already two years. All right, uh, Michelle, you have the uh, next question. Okay, so the next question um, relates to the biggest challenges facing the town, say in the coming year, and the role of the selectmen with regard to that challenge. Um, how they're involved, or if they aren't involved in the challenge, and how does that work? Well, actually, you know, th I think the biggest challenge is going to be um, bringing our community back together. And um, that might sound strange, but with everything that's happening in Washington right now, that it's, it's you know, with the, it's basically dysfunctional. Um, you know, it's uh, the party against party, person against person. There's no respect anymore. And what, what I'm afraid of is th that these last few months with the different campaigns, there's been, been a lot of rhetoric that, that almost it seems like Washington. And we just can't have that kind of stuff in our, in our small town. And I think that, it, that it would be, it's going to be my mission to try and bring the town back together, sort of like what happens at the beginning of... Um, of every town meeting when they say look we may disagree but we're all going to have to be neighbors when we get back and afterwards and it's the same thing here with this with the this this election is that we're all going to have to be come back and be neighbors and realize that um we all have good in our i like to assume that everybody has goodness and justice in their heart when they're coming forward with stuff and that we have to get back into that so that um uh the people uh, we, we back to a family and a community again, so we can all work together back on the boards and doing that again together. And I think that goes uh, well with uh, Jim's uh, question. Yes, um, John, the Hopkins is one of the few towns in the state that uh, where political parties and the caucus system um, are, you know, s somewhat govern um, the election mm -hmm. process. How do you feel that? Um, the policies of the local Democratic and Republican parties uh, play a role in town government. Well, it's funny, I think we're, there's only about, out of the 351 cities and towns, I think there's only about 12 or something like that that, that have a, a, a full caucus system. Um, well, the, the, way that, the way that I saw the system originally was uh, when I first ran, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago, I was running against a Democratic incumbent. And I was, at the time, I was, uh, I was not enrolled. And um, when, uh, when it came time for a campaign, I had no idea what to do. And so I, I looked over, and then the, the Republicans were there. And I, so I approached the Republicans and said, can you help me with the campaign? I don't even know where to start. Um, and I think that that's probably where the role should be, is, is giving people some help and some guidance. You know, when it comes to the local level, as I was saying before, there really, there's no place for, 
for the, 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 the rhetoric. This, you know, we're all trying to get the best person in each position. And one of the things that, that I've always tried to, I've always crossed the aisle. You know, I've worked with the, with the, the now chair of the, of the uh, Democratic caucus in town. And, and I've crossed the lines. I've got the people on, on the Republican side very upset with me because at times I believe that, that the other the candidate was, was either the independent or the, or the Democratic candidate. And, uh, but I always try to put the best person in the best position. So I really don't, as, as, as much as the caucuses are good to try and help people that are newbies and novices, I still don't want to get to the point where, where we are in Washington, where we, everything starts to fall apart and we start voting party lines as opposed to who's best for our community. You, you want the best people in there because, you know, this is our town. The things that happen in Washington, you know, whether, the, whether they, they, it's a $4 billion road bill or a $10 billion road bill, it means nothing compared to our opening the North Road to, take, to actually take uh, traffic off of Main Street. Those are the things that are important in the downtown. And it has nothing to do with whether a Republican or a Democrat or an undergold. Quick follow-up. Um, do you think that having Democrats and Republicans um, at the town level possibly fosters or enhances a kind of them and us mentality? It always has. <laughs> it always has. You know, it, it's when you look back uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago, up, and up until a few years ago, with the, it was the Democrats controlled stuff, and then the, the schools came through. The Republicans wanted the good schools at the time, and the Democrats were holding down the, 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 the budgets and everything else, and, and now everybody wants good schools. Everybody wants the safest community. Everybody wants it, so, it, it, you know, and so that's why I feel as though there's a lot of much ado about nothing when it comes to, the, to some of this rhetoric that's happening in, in, in town right now. All right. Uh, the Board of Selectmen is defined by the uh, Mass Municipal Association as a team. Mm -hmm. And they say that the Board of Selectmen must work as a team to help make decisions and decide what is best for the town. How well do you work with others, and can you give examples? Do I play well with others? <laughs> well, um, I'll bring up Zach again. Being, I've, been, I've been chair approximately, f I guess, the last five years, I think. And that's a, that's a board where we have uh, uh, between nine and 15 members. Last year, we had 15 members on the board. So you can imagine the diverse personalities that have to come together. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, it's, and it's a constant juggling game of, of you know, there, there are newbies that just, that just came on. There are the, the, the nimbies that they just came in for to either push for or hold back on on a zoning on some zoning enhancement that we might be looking at. Then there are the people that have been there for for ten years that know the structure of how how to get how to get zoning done correctly, and and it's juggling all of these these opinions and and, um, and personalities in order to come up with a um, a zoning article or an enhancement that can get through town meeting, that, that we believe that we're not wasting time. Well, actually, that can get through the planning board, then through town meeting, because a lot of times things that get eaten up with the planning board are modified, then they sometimes get kicked back to Zach. And, and it's, again, it's, it's trying to, uh, I think I've said it before, keeping an open mind and an open heart and believing that everybody's trying to, to, to do good. Even the person that came here, the NIMBY, that says, not in my backyard, they've got a point because there could be other people in that neighborhood that believe the exact same way. And so we have to be cognizant of those feelings and, and try and do the, try and do right by all of them because you know, that person could have 20 people at town meeting and that could, uh, amendment after amendment after amendment and something that we think is simple can, can be one of those two hour, two hour um, uh, warrant articles that are on there. All right, Jim. Did I, did I, okay. I'm gonna pick up on the NIMBY. Um, label mm -hmm. and uh, not not as a uh, you know not as a slur but but as a reasonable um, issue uh, it looks on a map like Hopkinton has an increasing and possibly disproportionate footprint of Eversource in town mm -hmm. um, there is there are currently you know there are a lot of, of installations that are currently 
two being proposed, one on the west side of town at Gasgate Station um, near Elmwood School in a residential area. And uh, there's actually a, a meeting tonight um, to discuss um, a uh, liquefier. proposed liquefier yeah. plant. Will you be attending that meeting? Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try to. It all depends on, on uh, there's, there's planning board also. That, Me uh, too. And exactly. I like to try and keep up with the planning board. But, so that, that's, where, that's where it's tough to be able to select. That's a one and a half million dollar, I'm sorry, 150 million right, dollar uh, installation on Wilson Street. My question is, what recourse does the town have? Because there are a lot of people who fear that those projects are going to impact, among other, besides safety, the bottom line is property value. Well, I, I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm one of them that, that, that's very concerned about these, uh, about these issues. And the, 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 the main thing I can say is stay vigilant. You know, as a, as a, as a as a board of selectmen, as a planning board, as 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 a as just a resident of Hopkinton, we've got to stay vigilant, and we've got to we've got to fight this at a state level. This is where we have to we have to engage uh, our, our representative and and and, and Senator Spoka, uh, representative Dykemer and Senator Spoka, and 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 even and even write to the governor and and the lieutenant governor. She's great. She's been great to us here with the compact. Um, and we've got to fight this on a state level because the DPU is very powerful, and um, and and that's you know we've 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 lost a lot of uh, arguments with the DPU in the past, and uh, and the biggest thing I can say is that we've all got to stick together. We've got to stay vigilant because uh, they they will run roughshod right over us. One of the good things that just happened at town meeting though, is um, uh, where. Uh, the chairman, Ken Weissmantle, brought forth a, 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 an article where we can, um, uh, it, allows, uh, it allows the ZBA some, some flexibility and some teeth so that uh, we, we're putting some small uh, hooks in so, so, it, so that they at least have to go through one of our uh, hurdles. It's a small one and they can, they can run rough shot, but at least it gives us a delay tactic to some extent. I'm probably giving away our, our uh, battle plan but uh, you know, but again, just stay vigilant, stay with the state, and, and, and let's all stick together. Quick follow up, having been at that planning board meeting when, when this was discussed, it sounded more like the, the plan was to give Eversource or utilities um, a kind of an incentive to apply to the town rather than going directly to the DPU, which usually seems like they rubber stamp. Um, Eversource's plans, but mm -hmm. but by giving them maybe a, a less expensive and quicker route by applying to the town, that it it might get their attention. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we you know that that gives us at least a two pronged approach, you know, because we you know again we have to go through the state, we have to find somebody that can help us when it comes to the DPU, you know, the the, the last changes that we were just doing up, up on uh, Wilson Street. Um, you know, we, we fought that one. We were in, we were in court with them. We we did uh, deposition after deposition, and they did exactly what they wanted. All right, Michelle, you have the next question. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my question actually a okay. little bit here because um, the, the original question does say how do your goals and objectives align with the town's vision statement, uh, but I know that John worked uh, very much in. To helping to craft that vision no, I can, statement. I can, I can recite it pretty much okay. if you want me to. So, uh, so, um, so you can talk a little bit about that. And then the other part of it that we were talking about was um, the town charter. And we just recently updated and passed that. But sort of the role of a selectman in a town with a town charter and how does that all work with the vision tied in and people working together? Yeah. Well, the, you know, it's the, the vision statement. I keep it in my little my little case over there all the time. I keep the vision statement and I keep a map of Hopkinton that um, uh, my good friend Tom Terry made for me and laminated, uh, I don't know, eight or ten years ago for me. And I carry that to every meeting. And I car and, and in the last two years, I've always carried the, the uh, vision statement because the vision statement was you know, it was a totally collaborative effort by by the townspeople and the residents of Hopkinton where we had uh, surveys and we had uh, forums where people worked out you know, what, what the residents see the future of Hopkinton. 
Well, you know, there's the, you know, I can have my vision of Hopkinton, the other selectmen can have their vision, the planning board can have their vision, school committee, everybody can have their vision, but this is, all of those boards got together and all the residents got together. We wrote this visioning statement and uh, where, we wanted the, where to go, uh, we wanted the town to go. And when it comes to the, the charter, the, uh, the charters, uh, that, that's, the, that's the rules and regulations. That, that's that's how we how we govern ourselves, and um, that was important. You know, that, that was an important document because it, it tells us, you know, uh, you know, how far we can go, what we can't do, what we can do, and um, and having it tweaked really worked because we worked several years with the old charter, and um, and then we, we saw where there were some holes, and uh, it was a great effort. I mean, that charter committee. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being part of it. No, that was that was hard. I, you know, I, I remember uh, one of the uh, um, Todd Sestari, one of the board of selectmen members. I mean, he was just th that was that was day and night for you guys, and and Pam Wexlax. You know, that I really I hand I hand uh, give a hand to the to the charter committee because that was one heck of an effort. But again, that's the that those are the those are our guidelines. You know, there's the they're the um, the esoteric the the. The, uh, the visioning statement, which is um, you know, what people feel they want the town to be like, but then there's the real rules and, re rules and regulations, which is the charter. All right, Jim, you have the next question. Am I taking too long with my answer, so sorry. <laughs> Not at all. There's this too, but um, okay, transparency. Let me just get the, uh, a number of candidates at the uh, Women's Club um, mm -hmm. Introduction of candidates um, promise to be more, to be transparent, almost as if um, you know government wasn't transparent. So, um, what's your take on the current level of transparency in Hopkinton town government? Do you think we need more of it? Well, I see this one now. Some people might get offended, but I see this as much ado about nothing. You know, our, our, our town is doing quite well right now, financially. We're, pretty st we're very stable, we're, we, we've, we've, you know, our public safety is number four, we have the th number three high school. You know, and I think that, again, this is where we were talking be previously about uh, caucuses and, and, and trying to find talking points. You know, and somebody brought up transparency because they, they weren't able to find a, uh, some meeting minutes quickly on, on the website. I see one of the problems as being, we got a bad website. Not, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, not a bad website, but we're not Amazon. We're not Google. You know, we, we, we can't put you know hundreds of millions, hundreds of thousands, or millions of dollars into our website because we're not making money. Oh, sorry, I put my mic down. We're not making money on that. We're giving information, and I think that that one of the things that we've got to do is really work with the town manager, work with IT, and try and get a better website so people can get to those minutes faster. When it comes to transparency, well, you guys see me. I, I'm a, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve, which is dangerous sometimes, but uh, I'm always available. Anybody can find me at Golden Pond all day long, and a lot of people do. You know, otherwise, you know, look at uh, one of the town halls now, and you'll find me or, or one of the other selectmen. So I really think that this was a, um, a, a, a false narrative that came up about the transparency because, you know, uh, you know whether it's whether it's uh, 30 days, 40 days, or 50 days to try and get uh, meeting minute meeting minutes in, I think it was more that people weren't able to get to them once they were once they were in, or the the, the um, school committee that that people didn't realize that the school committee kept theirs on their own website, but they were right there. People could click right on them, but now there's a link to the town website and they can get to all of them, so. Can I follow up, oh, since you absolutely. mentioned meeting minutes, and that mm -hmm. was uh, the subject of an article and, and mm -hmm. some controversy, actually, at uh, the recent town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time in Hopkinton, um, going back a few years, I remember when I worked on, uh, for Metro West News, that meeting minutes were, and, and public records in general, were not that available I think there was a and there weren't a lot of times a misunderstanding on what was public and what isn't and there were a few times when the news went to uh, went to the state and the state you know forced the town to release some things and at that point I remember that the state came to town and set up uh, 
basically some meetings and seminars to explain the public meeting rules to um, you know members mm -hmm. of, of town government uh, and that was a long time ago um, and it also came up at town meeting that that there were a few times in recent history where the town was sued and it cost some money because um, it took too long to get the, the meeting minutes out. So, um, you know, what is your take on the, uh, on the article at town meeting and do you think that will help? Well, uh, as uh, on the Board of Selectmen, I was proud of drafting the article. And, and the, the reason why we came up with that time frame was because it w we, we thought it was fair. You know, again, the state, you know, the, the state won't get on anybody if, as, if it seems fair. You know, because you know, one of the things that, 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 that you may have heard was that the appropriations board, just before, just before the uh, town meeting, they're meeting every day. And you know, when somebody suggested, well, you get it, can you get it out before the next meeting? Well, no. <laughs> you know, if, if, you know if, and even the board of selectmen, we were meeting till midnight on, on several occasions. We had you know, a couple of emergency meetings and that, you know, to try and get some of this stuff done, especially with the flooding of town hall and all that. You know, and so we're just trying to come up with something that was fair. And, and when we're talking about um, volunteer uh, committees that don't have town hall support, well, you know, you, you gotta be fair. You know, yes, there, there are committees like um, uh, the Affordable Housing Committee that hasn't put in minutes since 2011, but then again, I don't think they've met since 2011. You know, we don't know, but that's something I asked the town manager to look into. You know, it, it, but, but you know, other than some of these huge examples of, of, of groups that only meet once a year or something, or, or every 10 years, you know, I, I think that, that people pretty much uh, are, are doing the right thing, and everybody means to do the right thing. You know, but I think that sometimes, like you just said, maybe we need another, uh, uh, another forum where people can learn how to do it, how, or maybe how to do it more efficiently, or how to take notes so that, they can, that, that they, they, the minutes don't become cumbersome. Technically, I just should mention, notes are considered public record. In other words, if, if the public wants to come in before the minutes are written up, technically, the notes that are taken are open record. Um, and that's another thing, if, if I may, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, sure. people, people should come to these meetings. You know, if the, if the first time somebody, if somebody finds something out about you know, the kennels uh, or we're changing something, there were probably a dozen meetings before this thing came up. You know, people didn't just pull, a thing, pull it out of a hat, like the, like the, uh, the uh, three events at, at town uh, uh, venues. That number three, well, it came up because we just really wanted one. We wanted to have an opening for the, uh, for the library. You know, and there was like, well, what about the DPW? Okay, two, two, we're gonna stop it at two. You know, and if people would only come to those things, we could have had some of this stuff out, or if people said, you shouldn't have it at all, but we didn't have any of that input. And then it was completely turned around at town meeting to be, now we have town, uh, town sponsor, town, <laughs> right, and it's just like, that has not been, that was never the intent. There was never the intent to, to make these, make our public buildings actual venues for things, because, you know, it, 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 it was never the intent. But more public input for every kind of committee would help because if people want more transparency, come. It's open meetings, come. John, uh, what do you take the most personal pride in that you accomplished as a selectman? Oh, it just happened at town meeting. It, oh, sorry, it just happened at town meeting. Um, about three years ago, Baypath came to, came to, okay, I always get back to Zach because I've been, it's, it's, it's been a staple. Came to Zach um, looking to see if there was any town land available because they were being evicted from, from the Eversource property. There's Eversource coming up again. They're the demon again, I guess. Um, and um, what, we, what we tried to do is look at their vision and mission statements and see if we could compare it to uh, you know any of the any of the land that that the town had to see if it fit in anywhere anywhere, and there and, and there were a couple spots that uh, uh, when we were looking at Irvine and Tadaro might be there. We were looking at Fruit Street. There were a couple other small spots that we were looking at, but then we we knew we had to tweak the zoning there. So so we got together and and, and we tweaked the zoning and then took it through the planning board the following year, and then the culmination was really this year. When, when we found you know, the, the, the uh, uh, parcel eight in, in Fruit Street. 
and then you know at the same time we was working with the with the scouts because you know, they they came in just this year because of the uh, of the uh, the Pratt land wasn't going to work for them and and the synergy that worked out here was just great um, we had the scouts that needed some land and we had Bay Path that needed some land so uh, what I'm looking forward to in the future so as I came to town meeting they both got the land but now what I'm looking forward to in the next in the next year or so is working with the two of them because now we have scale now we can we can do some shared so we don't have to knock the, cut down any more trees. So the two of them, you know, we can we can just make one and a half size parking lots instead of a double size parking lot. The um, the utilities they can work together to bring in the bring in utilities so that uh, it saves them saves them both a little bit of money. You know, and 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 then even even shared services um, where where you know the the scouts it would be a bad thing to to take care of. Uh, of animals and, and that kind of stuff. So I really think I'm really looking forward to the next next year or so of, of working out these kinks and, and actually getting the scouts a great place, getting Bay Path a really great place where we can have our dog pound. Because that was from the from the town's point of view, we were saving a, a lot of money by having Bay Path. People say why Bay Path? Well, because they're our dog pound, and and by state statute we have to have a dog pound. And for us to build one would be absolutely well. A waste of money from, the, from speaking from the board of selectmen, you know, it would be a total waste of money to build our own. So if Bay Path will do it for us. Um, it would be a great thing. And so I'm really, I'm excited about it, as you can see, to uh, work with the, those two groups and, and actually build build two things that that are going to be great for the town. All right. Well, we have a, a few yes or no questions for you. Unless uh, any of you have anything else. No, I think I'm good. All right. So this is just simple yes or no okay. answers. Oh sure, by the way, there'll be real complicated ones, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Back me into a corner. Yeah, there's a gray area, okay. Should recreational marijuana be banned in Hopkinton? Qualified yes. Okay. Should the age to purchase tobacco be increased to twenty one? No. Okay. Do you feel the school budget should be separated from the town budget on the town meeting warrant? Yeah, I, I'm not going to just give you a one-word answer. We, uh, you know, it, it's um, no, it shouldn't because we're one pair of pants. We're two pockets, but we're one pair of pants, and that's we've got to keep it in mind that you know it, it's the same thing with the with the DPW or the police or the fire. You know, so so we've got five pockets on our pants, but we're one pair of pants, and I'm sure that we can all work together, work more closely. You know, when I saw that 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 our high school was number three in in the state. And yet, yet our spending is is a, 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 a much less than number one or two, and number one and two are practically pr uh, private schools. So we, have, you know, so I consider us number one. Well, and, yeah. and, and it's a, it's a, <laughs> no, no, they, sh they shouldn't be separated because we're one pair of pants, and and uh, and I know that we can work together wonderfully in the future and and uh, and make our, make ourselves even better. All right, we're going to give you a couple of minutes now for final thoughts. Anything you want to sure. get out there to the people? I have a little prepared one. I cherish Hopkinton. I've expressed that feeling by my having been a volunteer for 19 years that I've lived here. Beginning with the schools, John Warren Lodge, St. John's Church, Congregation of B'nai Shalom, nine boards and committees, including Zoning Advisory Committee, Vice Chairman of the Planning Board, and now Vice Chairman of the Board of Selectmen. In my opponent's closing remarks at an early event, he disapprovingly referred to my last 10 or 15 years worth of volunteering as having done nothing. Let me highlight some of the successes that I've contributed to. In almost a decade on ZAC and the planning board, I oversaw the drafting of over 100 changes in the zoning bylaws. Part of the t town hall restoration team that is headed up and uh, that had us uh, up and running in only 16 hours. We settled contracts with the police, fire, and dispatch unions. Renewed the Metro West Veterans District uh, uh, Agreement, providing Chapter 115 benefits for our veterans. We purchased for town use 102 Fruit Street, the Pratt Farm, Hayden Row, the Irvine property, the Tadaro property, and 15 Claflin for the cemetery. We opened the North Row, relieving traffic downtown. The installation of a traffic, uh, uh, traffic light on School Street, saving lives. 
supported and worked for the new DPW facility, a new library, and a new elementary school. As public safety liaison, I have daily contact with the fire and police departments, and I'm very proud to say that we're the fourth safest community in the country. You can't beat that a heck of a lot. Vigorously encouraged strong fiscal planning that has put Hopkinton in a position to pass a second underride in just three years. Unprecedented in any town, removing millions of dollars of tax levy, maintaining the town's AAA bond rating. Again, you can't get much better than that. Ask any newcomer to Hopkinton why they moved to our town, and you'll likely hear the same reasons why I moved to town 20 years ago. To be part of a vibrant, accepting, generous community as evident during the Hopkinton's 300th birthday celebration. Sharon Timlin race, Polly Arts, Little League Parade, and my favorite, the Memorial Day Remembrance. When you go to that remembrance, you can't get much better than that. While I'm respectful of Hopkinton's past, I look forward to being engaged in our present and actively preparing for our future. I humbly ask for your vote on Monday, May 15th. Thank you very much. All right, uh, for Michelle Murdoch, Jim Kleinkoff, I'm Tom Nappy, and John, we want to thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, and thank you very much for Hopkinton for having me for the past three years, and I hope to be part of the next three years. Thank you.